Now, let's focus on the Copernicus climate change surface, C3S. You've seen the logo at the top of all the slides. C3S consists of several elements. I'll explain these in detail. C3S is, first of all, about climate data. Climate data will be provided on, on an operational basis by a number of climate data providers. There's guaranteed budget for this by European law. This is very different from the past, where we often had project-based funding and data continu continuity was lacking at times. Now there's direct funding of operational services for climate data, so that's a great improvement. Climate data will be disclosed through what we call the Climate Data Store, so the CDS, the Climate Data Store. The CDS is the central repository where climate data can be accessed and used. On the next level, the CDS toolbox provides a graphical user interface and tools to access, process and visualize climate data. What is new is that we try to bring the applications to the data. Because we're generally speaking about very large data sets, we try to reverse the paradigm, thereby bypassing the need for you to download the data to your application. Through the CDS toolbox, you can do a lot of work on the data set beforehand, so you can make online graphs or download a much reduced data set for further analysis to your organization or workstation. At the next level, the Copernicus Climate Change Service also provides periodic assessments of climate. C3S provides climate bulletins on a monthly, annual, or if there's need for it, on an event basis. For example, there was a climate bulletin made last summer on the heat wave in Northern Europe. A very important part of the Copernicus climate change service are what we call the sectoral information systems. These are being developed in close collaboration with sectoral representative. So with people from agriculture, water man management or other sectors to make much more tailor-made pre-processed data relevant for the respective sectors. These last two categories really target the end users. Scientists and technically informed people can directly access the CDS and the toolbox. Uh, these people, and especially entrepreneurs and what we call knowledge purveyors, for example consultants, will be the link to policymakers and citizens. Of course, we want the CDS data to be authoritative. The CDS should become the place to go to access climate data. So there's a strong evaluation and quality control component to the C3S system. And last but not least, we have the user learning services that this course is also part of, where we want to provide you with lessons on the why, on the what and on the how to use of the Copernicus Climate Change Services. The C3S system became operational in June 2018. This means it's a young system that's not perfect yet. Many of the things are online in a beta version and we greatly appreciate your feedback on functionality or bugs that might still be present. But let me give you an overview of what is presently online. A number of data sets are already online in the CDS and there's a roadmap of what is planned to become available and when. The roadmap can be found on the C3S homepage. We have a beta version of the toolbox. The toolbox is continuously being improved, tools are being added and better documented so that more and more people will be able to use the toolbox. The climate bulletins are fully operational and have been for some years. For the sectoral information systems, we have a number of proof of concepts, for example for the water, agriculture and energy sectors. There's a roadmap to make these operational and around the end of 2018 the first ones will become operational. Evaluation and quality control, which gives, for example, information on uncertainty, is something in the background that is in progress. And finally, we have to use our learning services, the online platform where you are most likely watching this video. New or improved content is being developed almost as we speak, and there will be many more lessons added this year and next year.